humans have been fascinated by metals and in particular gold. It is said that the earliest humans found some of these metals in their exposed veins in rocks or through the weathering of these exposed veins that causes small nuggets to be washed into streams and rivers. But why do we find heavy metals in veins like this? And are the veins themselves an indication that they may have been formed in situ, not through a supernova explosion elsewhere in the universe? If we take gold as an example, it has an atomic number of 79. It is considered to be a relatively rare element. If we were to spread out all of the gold ever mined, it would only cover a football field to a depth of about 18 inches. And this by itself might seem like quite a small amount, but consider that the universe is literally brimming with gold. The problem is that scientists cannot figure out where all this gold actually came from. The main theory for how it ended up on Earth is through interstellar dust and asteroids billions of years ago. We will come back to how this then ends up in a vein in a little while. How did the gold end up in the interstellar dust in the first place? In order to create the gold you require 79 protons and 118 neutrons, which then need to be violently pushed together in a nuclear fusion reaction to form a single atomic nucleus. The energy required to make this happen requires massive explosions through supernova events. The problem is that stars massive enough to fuse gold before they die are thought to become black holes when they explode, and in a regular supernova that gold gets sucked into the black hole. Another suggestion to explain the gold is through neutron star mergers, but the problem is that these are too rare and would not account for the abundance of the gold that we observe. So let's jump back to how gold ends up in these veins here on Earth. It is speculated that they are formed by hot pressurised water being forced through the veins and depositing certain metals at certain places. But can this really explain the richness of these deposits in the vein and also the fact that there tends to be groups of metals found close to each other like silver, copper and gold? The strange fact is that these metals are only found in these veins and never elsewhere in lumps or in areas where you might expect the water to pool. Another odd fact is that these metals are only ever found in the crust of the planet. No deep core samples have returned any of these metals in the cores. Instead they tend to be composed of predominantly silicates which are rich in iron and magnesium, and lots of water. If we look at a different example we can start to see a very interesting link. The silver mines that were operated in the ore mountains in Germany centuries ago followed veins of silver ore deeper into the earth. As they dug deeper the silver veins would suddenly end, but the vein itself continued not as silver but as a dark ore they called pitch blend. It was actually considered bad luck to come across this as it meant that the silver vein had been depleted. Centuries later these mines were once more of interest as the pitch blend was made up from a mineral which contained high concentrations of uranium. So how is it possible that these veins were deposited by hot pressurised water which deposited the silver first and then later the uranium? So are there other ways that these veins could have been created? If we examine the structure of these veins they tend to take on the appearance of a Lichtenberg pattern. Is it possible that these veins are discharge channels for some massive electrical event either primordial or through some catastrophe. Each layer the discharge passes through has a different chemical composition. Some have lots of water, some are nearly dry, some are under high pressure, some have light elements and other have abundance of heavy elements such as iron and barium. As the discharge passes through these various layers in different conditions could a process of transmutation take place that creates different elements depending on the starting conditions? Could the structured atomic model hold clues that could help to unlock how this is even possible? If we examine breccia pipes we see a similar story. Breccia is a term most often used for clastic sedimentary rocks that are composed of large angular fragments. The spaces between these fragments are filled with a matrix of smaller particles and a mineral cement that binds the rock together. Brachiopipes are like chimneys. 
The origin of these structures is disputed, but the most commonly accepted theory is that they formed at intersections of fractures. In these areas, hydrothermal solutions forced their way to the surface. There are some areas that show many examples of these pipes close together, such as Copper Creek in Arizona, which contains over 500 mineralized pipes, and the gold mining area of Cripple Creek in Colorado, which contained brachia pipe ore deposits. Could these also be electrical discharges on an even larger scale? When we examine an example of a brachio pipe, you will start to see some obvious overlap with the discussion we've just had and the Earth in Upheaval series. Around these brachio pipes, we often find petrified wood and fossils on the edges. We find the petrified wood at the top layer, and near the center of the pipe, we find a uranium ore plug. This plug coincides with the hermit shell layer, which is rich in iron and other elements. The layers directly above and below this are much more depleted of these heavy elements. So is this yet another example of a massive electrical discharge directed at the surface, which instantaneously petrifies the tree surrounding it and causes a large discharge directed downwards? Does the abundance of the elements in the hermit shell layer mean that the transmutation was able to occur here rapidly, converting most of the heavier elements into larger, even heavier elements like uranium, similar to the ore veins, but on a much larger scale. The fact that these pipes are often associated with mines where veins occur is probably also no surprise, could smaller discharges from the main one fan out into the various layers, creating veins of metals. It is also not a surprise to find that within these pipes, not only do we find uranium, but also metals like gold, copper, and silver. In future videos, we will explore exactly how this could happen using the structured atomic model, and explain why it is not a surprise to find these heavier elements grouped together as they are. As always, be brave, be curious, the truth is waiting for us. Until next time.